Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to explain the anatomy of the heart, including the internal and external structures, how blood is pumped to and from the heart, and the small vessels involved in coronary circulation. So the heart has three layers. There's the epicardium, which is this layer all the way on the outside. There's the myocardium, which is the very thick layer in the middle. That is the muscular layer of your wall. And then there's the endocardium, which is the layer all the way on the inside, lining the walls of the heart. So the heart has four chambers. On the right side, there's the right atrium, the right ventricle, and those pump the blood through pulmonary circulation, which is the circulation that brings the blood out to your lungs to get oxygen and then back to the heart. And then you have your left atrium and your left ventricle, which pump the blood through systemic circulation which is the circulation that goes out to all of your body tissues to deliver oxygen and then returns to the heart deoxygenated. So coming into the right atrium, you have the blood returning from systemic circulation through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and the blood returning from coronary circulation through the opening of the coronary sinus. Coronary circulation is the circulation that actually feeds the walls of the heart. And also draining into the superior vena cava, you have the right and left brachiocephalic veins and the azygous vein. So once the blood gets into the right atrium, it passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, and the right ventricle then pumps the blood up through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk, where it then goes into the pulmonary arteries. We can only see the left pulmonary arteries here. On the back, we can see the left and right pulmonary arteries, which take the blood out to the lungs to receive oxygen and drop off carbon dioxide. From there, it returns to the heart in the left and right pulmonary veins. A lot of people get confused as to why the left and right pulmonary arteries are blue. Um, meaning that they're deoxygenated. Arteries just means it's going away from the heart. It has nothing to do with being oxygenated or deoxygenated. So in systemic circulation, yes, the arteries will be oxygenated, but in pulmonary circulation, it's reversed. So once the blood returns to the heart through the left and right pulmonary veins. It enters the heart. Um, it enters into the left atrium, then passes down through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, which then pumps the blood out through the aortic semilunar valve where it then enters the aorta. Now the aorta is the largest artery in the body, so it has different names for different regions. Uh, here we can see the ascending aorta and aortic arch. Coming off of the aortic arch, there is the left subclavian artery, the left common carotid artery, 
and the brachiocephalic artery, which splits into the right subclavian and right common carotid, although you cannot see it on this model. And just a reminder, these are your right and left brachiocephalic veins. Not all the time, but oftentimes um, veins and arteries will have the same name. So next we're going to talk about some of the internal structures that I didn't already mention. There's the fossa ovalis, which is just that little white disc. In the fetus, it was the foramen ovale. It was an open hole between the left and right atrium because a fetus isn't breathing. So there's no reason for all of this blood to be sent off to pulmonary circulation. So some of the blood can pass directly from the right atrium to the left atrium to be sent into systemic circulation. There's also the ligamentum arteriosum, which connects the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. It's another bypass system um, in the fetus where it is the ductus arteriosus. So once again, it's taking some of the blood from the pulmonary trunk to bypass pulmonary circulation and go right into systemic circulation. In the ventricles, you can see these little nubs, uh, which are the papillary muscles, and they are attached to part of the um, valves called the chordae tendinae. So the chordae tendinae is part of the bicuspid valve or tricuspid valve, depending. And also we have this wall here between the left and right ventricle, which is the interventricular septum. On this side of the heart, we have the pectinate muscles, which are just the little ridges you can see in here. And we also have the trabeculae carne, which are these ridges here. Coming to the external heart, we have the right and left auricles. And underneath the right and left auricles, we have the right and left coronary sulcus. If you remember from the brain or from the bones, a sulcus means a groove. So it's just the groove underneath of the auricles. We also have the anterior interventricular sulcus, which is the groove on the front of the heart, and the posterior interventricular sulcus, which is the groove on the back of the heart. So inside of the anterior interventricular sulcus, we have the anterior interventricular artery. So in the back, we have the posterior interventricular artery. Then under the auricles in the coronary sulcus, we have the right coronary artery um, and the left coronary artery, although on this model, it's kind of hiding underneath of the left auricle, but you can see it here as this little nub. That's the left coronary artery. So coming off of the right coronary artery is the marginal artery. Um, the word margin means the border, like the margin of your paper is the border of your paper. 
the marginal artery is on the border of your heart. And then um, off of the left coronary artery is the circumflex artery. Now moving on to veins, veins are named for their size. In the front, inside of the anterior interventricular sulcus is the great cardiac vein. Then next to the marginal artery is the small cardiac vein. And in the back, in the posterior interventricular sulcus, is the middle cardiac vein. And all of those veins meet up and empty into the coronary sinus. And as I mentioned earlier, the coronary sinus opens to the inside of the right atrium. All right, thank you everyone for watching. I really hope that was helpful. Um, if you did find it helpful, please remember to comment, like, or share because that helps other students who are struggling to find my videos. Also, please remember, I may not have said every single testable item in my video, so still don't forget to uh, check out your lab books as always, and if you're not sure if something is testable material, definitely talk to your professor. All right, good luck studying everyone and have a great day.